let's try to remember the idea of versioning system. We would like to synchronize our work with contributions from other authors. And for this purpose, we have two perspectives. Our local copy we are working on, and on the other hand, status that was generated by the it's The world becomes a little bit more complex due to the fact that we have um, an opportunity to store locally different versions on our computer too. And this means we have a working copy and a staging level where changes are stored that were made to my code base. Code base means we have not just a single yeah, script document, but all elements belonging to a code repository, multiple yeah, script files, images, probably some data sets we would like to um, exploit with our students and so on. So this means we have a mixture of different types and this belongs to a working copy on a staging level. And we have to give some commands to shift certain pieces of our changes to the staging level and afterwards uh, to the local repository on our computer. Yeah. In this way, it's, this opens the opportunity to have a very fine gained structure of our changes. Only things belonging together um, should be contained in one new version. If I start working in the morning, I'm finished in the afternoon and I push, squeeze all the things together in one version and um, result this is not helpful. I try to separate the different concerns in a way that my colleagues, or probably me, in the next day, are able to revise, to revert some of the adaptations. Yeah, it's a divide and conquer is a magic idea in the background. And we have, on the other hand, of course, a remote repository where all other authors have the same behavior, so they commit their interesting changes to it. And this means at the end, I probably receive the information, hey, on the remote repository, there is a newer version than your adaptations. And then we start a corresponding merge operation. This means we have to adapt the content um, according to our the ideas we would like to stay in and sort. Again, it's not important to know what git and git commit and git push uh, do, but you should have the commands in your mind uh, to understand if we um, will use it now in a in corresponding projects due to the fact that it looks complicated. It's not hard to use if we take the git or versioning process as a separate program and we put an internet front end before. So the user just interact with a commonly used web front end and it not interested in the algorithms solving all the versioning problems. And for this purpose I would like in a very short demonstration uh, introduce a um, an example I choose, this is by the personal understanding, I choose GitHub um, as such a web front end that is already in use for our lectures too. What can we see here? We have a code base, there is only one document at the moment. And if we are connected with a real project, then hundreds and thousands of files probably appear here. And for all of them, we can understand the history of each commit. I want, would like to illustrate it by opening the history for our specific file. And you can recognize this course was generated seven hours ago and I made some adaptations and all changes, do you remember the changes in the Wikipedia document are illustrated by different highlighting syntax. So I'm able to monitor the activities of Andrew does he do a good job? And his changes should be considered in the materials for the next lecture. Yeah, so we, there is an interaction um, related to the changes and it's really cool. You can add some um, 
additional comment he comments here. Why did you do this? And establish a discussion about the materials. And this is a, a next level of open educational resources. We would like to discuss about the material in order to improve the quality, in order to improve um, the content. Uh, let's commit at a single comment. And if someone is interested, of course, we can go back to the repository. It's a public repository. You can take a view on the repository by um, or to make a, an image of this QR code again. Probably you want to uh, see the commit history or some adaptations by yourself. Um, here are a huge amount of um, opportunities integrated or features integrated. We can discuss about issues. So I'm able to write down um, a new demand for a certain uh, content at a new chapter. And now I'm described the problem and I can um, add this question, for instance, to Andrew. And now I'm able to monitor the progress. Yeah. It sounds a little bit weird, of course, if we both have such complex structure around our Neoscript document. But if you imagine that not two, but 20 authors working together in a specific course material, you need a kind of organization of three structuring, structuring the um, project. And this can be addressed by all of our um, commits. So I explain this commit belongs to the issue mentioned by Andrew, blah, 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 blah. So the complete history becomes structured now. As you remember, Wikipedia has just one bullet line of uh, versions, but we have the opportunity to separate the different concerns and to understand, oh, this was task three that was at, um, at, um, attributed here or addressed here, and it follows to the version whatever X I said. Yeah, this is an important feature. There are many other um, challenges. I can integrate different um, implementations of the whole projects. So if you intend to work with it, you would, again, uh, similar to our system, build your own fork. This is a safe area where you can check some adaptations. And afterwards, you send me a pull request. That means I have a newer version. I'm convinced that's a really good idea to merge my adaptation to your general project. Again, this divide and conquer. Everyone now can play with the content, check probably with individual students, and afterwards it's merged in the whole um, repository that can be used by everyone. There are next steps, actions we can automatically, and this is done in our university, um, many cases, we can run small pieces of code for providing the export formats. So we write down the Lear script document, and we already talked about that some of you intend to integrate the content in a learning management system, so you have to generate, for instance, a SCORM package, an IMS package, or any other, or many students ask for a PDF document. And this can be done automatically. Each time a new version is generated, such a program runs, and this is very simple, it's just some lines to integrate here. Okay, and at the end, of course, we talk about an text document, we can easily adapt its content directly here. This means I have um, some new ideas, add content here, and now the interesting aspect is that we can, and here we in prof professional software development, we can add explanations. Why did I do the changes we mentioned in this address. Yeah, and probably it's a good idea, and I'm talking about in my lectures about to 
give a good message title to your changes. Extend the readme file. If we think about a huge project, then no one is interested to read all commit messages in detail or to analyze them. So it's very important to have a clear understanding how a commit message should be written and which abstraction should be used at this level. And I made some adaptations and now they become visible in our history. We have a new version and with a more clear idea of what happens in the new setup. And this can be connected to our uh, Visual Studio code. As I mentioned, I prefer an professional editor for um, implementations. If someone is interested, I can show you how you can combine the versioning management system and the corresponding Visual Studio code with GitHub Copilot. And such an AI in background supports me greatly when I'm writing down the content of the document. This means it automatically extends tabular structures, uh, completes code examples, or adds some um, quizzes or some similar. So it's very easy to uh, realize a basic structure of your course material. Okay, that's a general idea. And now, of course, I'm able to use our document as a starting point for, in, for dissemination. Um, as you can see, I already added such a black and um, blue uh, button here. What's, what's the purpose is? We have just a link on the corresponding uh, LIA script, script um, implementation in your browser. LIA script GitHub IO course. And then we reference our material we just um, authored here. And um, at the end, we this starts the rendering process, but just local in your browser. There is no server that is addressed now. And of course, now we have our tutorial here and we can click through its um, small content. Yeah. And if you are interested to connect it now with the classroom concept, of course, all the things um, that were demonstrated by Andrew, they are available here. Translation, the different formats of presentation. Yes, you can take your file, the LIA script file, and send it individually to your students. Works fine. So they use the file, start it um, in their browser, and they receive the same result. But in many cases, and if you have many students, we heard from different attendees, then such a digital distribution, you know what I mean, um, is much more comfortable. In this way, the changes you made to the documents will automatically integrate it in the uh, representation that becomes visible to the students, of course. Yes, for my understanding, it's the best way to present the content to the students. Yes, of course. Does it also, is it just responses, comments, replies, comments, and responses? Shows, or you have, does it also allow discussion forums? Yes, of course, of course. That's the next step. Give me two minutes, I will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. And now comes a fancy topic here. Um, we talked about uh, collaboration, of course, and the question um, is not scripted. Um, it, the, the opportunity of commonly work in such documents offers the opportunity that many authors participate, discuss, um, do some improvements, make some tests, and this fancy movie illustrates the development process of our year script documents for the last large lectures um, since 2018. And you recognize each of the 
the blobs here is an individual person that was involved in the development and the separate areas mark one lecture with um, 15 to 30 separate um, Lia script documents for 19 minutes approximately and they are involved in different stages and you can recognize oh this is a, a winter term lectures there was a focus is um, on certain parts here um, and you see there is a permanent development of course we, if we talk about computer science it's necessary to adapt the material materials permanently but I guess it becomes obvious that lecturers and now it's interesting students can be involved in this project pro process and the general idea is if we take a view to our courses i made a collection here unfortunately it's in german but i guess you can imagine the, the general idea we have links to different repositories here and the students can already start the first course and we have an overview about the contributors. Again, students are an important part in this play. Um, we have, as you probably know from your experience, we have a heterogeneous student uh, structure. Some of our uh, course attendees seem to program since their fifth year, um, and others, they are completely new in their domain of computer science. And the more experienced stu students are very thankful for the opportunity to be part of the development process of the materials. They are very happy to read their names, if you switch to software development, to read their names in the header of our, to remember Andrew showed us the header, and you see here that some of the authors were involved in this process and they are very happy to be visible here. Sometimes I, or I saw an um, application from a student sent to a company and they reference their collaboration in the material collection too as an indicator for their exceptional knowledge. This was an interesting um, step. And of course the pattern is the same. We have the different courses. This is the introduction to software development. If, um, again, we have an overview about the topic, all these things. And if you are interested in the actual content, you can, of course, run the translator. And yeah, friends is here uh, automatically used um, for the application. Yes. The interesting question is, um, how our students work in this um, setup um, and how the process is implemented. And this is probably interesting for you if you ask, how can I, now I understood the idea of Leo script and how can I implement my own courses? Uh, my personal preferences for editing is to use um, the offline Visual Studio Code editor, as I mentioned, I can show you a short demonstration afterwards. And I organize a lecture, a specific topic in such a course material collection and um, explain students how they can contribute uh, during the development process. The second point meets the dissemination. Um, in most cases, it's completely fine for to use GitHub and the buttons we saw for uh, activating the courses for individual students. So if they, after, after the lecture, they want to dive into the topics, they rerun some experiments, rerun some code, made some adaptations is very helpful. Probably some, um, one comment again for the executable code. If you know how a lecture in computer science um, is implemented, the first two weeks, you just need to explain how to install all the tools uh, that are necessary to run a single Hello World uh, piece of code. And if we implement, if we integrate such an environment in our lecture materials, then it's much more helpful and more straight uh, to start the actual implementation. I 
added and this is but this is interesting for the especially for non-computer scientists i added an additional website in front of this material collection where students for, from again non-computer science department can download uh, their different results and some of them ask for pdf documents and this should illustrate the transferability of leo script documents of course and the background runs a process that exports our Leo script material to a PDF. And this is offered here um, on a separate website that gives students an overview about um, the process or the progress of our course and should help to understand um, where they can find the material. So, so the single point of entrance for a specific course due to the fact that our non-computer science students are sometimes a bit, little bit uh, strict related to the, or limited to the capability to search for the materials. What's the result? And we already saw some um, inputs. Um, each year students um, are involved in the development, in the further development. In most cases, I. Um, adapt some specific lectures um, and invite the corresponding partners and write issues um, and they respond. And this means we have an application of things we try to teach usage of tools for open software development for software development based on the learning material too. So students get an easy access to the concepts and afterwards they can apply the knowledge, the gained knowledge um, on their own projects or in a further career. Yeah, due to the fact that students love to correct professors, they are highly motivated in this <laughs> scenario. <laughs> and uh, you see here for one year, the 20, uh, 22 contributors, it helps me to improve the material. If you have already experience in giving lectures, you know you get a feedback from a student on page three to one. There is a typo or here you could improve the explanation. But if you leave the lecture hall, you probably yeah, um, lost this information. And by involving um, embedding the students in this process is much, much more um, effective than in other um, and then another method and i have again the last and this is the last link i present that's, that these are the corresponding pull request i received during uh, 2023 the um, delete example lines change numbers and so on and you can imagine that the students are uh, very in interested in this process here okay i hope this closed the gap between students and your received knowledge about Lear script from the morning session. How can I disseminate? How can I distribute my course materials? My choice is um, GitHub, but of course you can use any other platform. If this is just a web space where students download the materials or do you link the corresponding information, it's possible too. From my understanding, and this is, but this is from computer science perspective, we have, we can solve two challenges. Students are involved in the material development, and on the other hand, they interact with tools that are essential for their further career. Okay. Any questions so far? Then we would switch again with Andrew, and he would like to explain something. Is the artificial dissemination, or should I say, sending materials to the students? How easy is it? Sending it on the email, using the. It would be possible too. Yes, you can send the material um, on. Like maybe after presentation or. Calls in Wudu, and uh, there is need for the students to have the soft copy of the material. 
you know the usual thing is that you ask them to send the email you type it manually then you begin to disseminate is it with the, with the uh near is it yes the near spirits is there a way of doing it perhaps you ask them there should be something i will send to them they will type their email by themselves and automatically it will upload for me to send it is there anything like that and like this one we are yeah, if you use um, a learning management system in this way it's no problem you can address the whole course by one email so send an email to the whole course means each student enrolled to this um, lecture will be notified by this corresponding email and on Is the that provision for it on it's, yeah, yeah it's, it, due to the fact that LeoScript is a description language for the content. This is not a feature covered by LeoScript, but it can be integrated due to its transferability um, by the infrastructure of your uh, university or your school system. It, just to explain the idea um, a little bit, I um, or to, the motivation to send materials to the students we have an application yes here Andrew spoke about the opportunity to run code and it's my expectations from it's not my expectations that students understand all the content of a lecture immediately so it's necessary to dive into the topic afterwards um, and in this way it's very helpful to have the theoretical part in parts of the problem in combination with executable code and they are able to adapt the code understand better understand the meaning of the concepts and to implement iterative pro learning processes in their own space uh, in their own velocity or in their own pace um, according to the um, experience they already received yeah, and that's another aspect of open educational. So the students are invited to um, investigate the material additionally. Okay. Well, we'll make a fast run uh, for the part. So Sebastian made. Um, I talk about hosting the content on GitHub, uh, but uh, as we said, uh, with the script, we try to be agnostic as possible. You can store the content wherever you want to. I mean, host it on uh, your server. You can use a GitLab or actually everywhere. So, but what uh, we are also adding is the ability to use this. Wait a second. Awesome. Browser based sharing. So, what does it mean? So, I mean, the browser now, are modern tools, I mean, they also can be used as a server partially so that they can also disseminate or used for disseminating content. And one of the aspects that's mostly used are these are these peer to peer uh, ideas. So, if you're coming, it was like this for 20, 30 years. So, there's a central server. And all the externals who want to access some certain contents have to refer uh, by the URL or have to request this from a central server. That's it. So basically, there's one. If this one gets lost, hopefully there's uh, the if your LMS gets deleted, or hopefully there are enough backups. Otherwise, there's uh, gone. So you have to copy it this way. And if you look at uh, another concept, which is actually peer to peer, which means there's no central server included actually but the content is stored one disseminates shares and another one might be interested in and uh, he's also then afterwards sharing the content with others so that they can like yeah create a peer-to-peer -peer network and they host this content so if there's no one there so it's the opposite of course so there's no one sharing it and you won't get access to the data uh, anymore like in the server the server is always running and their browsers might be not always be uh, open and connected so well i will start with content sharing uh, okay not currently saving documents is a timeless problem so 
the great thing about Git and GitHub is, and even if you, even if GitHub in 20 years is not a thing anymore and it's got delete, everyone who has participated on the GitHub project receives an entire copy, a host copy on his local machine of the entire history. So even uh, if GitHub is down or something like this, uh, or I cannot connect to it, I can still work on it entire and even uh, serve this from a server from my own laptop and uh, uh, can uh, merge changes with others. Uh, but another one, this is just uh, for you as an example, so that we try to be as agnostic as possible. I even go to the live editor, for example. You note, uh, this is my learning nuggets. So this is just the idea uh, that we added to One, two, three. So I probably don't want to create an entire repository for this piece where I just uh, have probably something like a schedule to share or some place or some ideas. So in the easiest way, so this is my course. What you can do is you can use this data URI for example, and you create another link that looks like this. So, but now it's using the data protocol. I'll show you this thing in a minute. And if you're there, basically it's like HTTPS uh, colon, no, the colon, how it's called? Two dots, uh, yeah, in this case, but it's now data and it might be text, might be something else. If you open this, only a script or open this in a new tab, it will, encode the entire content of this learning nuggets probably entirely within the URL. You're free to share this on any kind of social media or something like this, then the social media is hosting your content. So this is the idea. So just one opportunity. So we do this on Twitter and you can pretty have pretty long URLs on Twitter. So this is just an easy example of how you can share probably also this content on Twitter, some examples without generating a code anymore. So just like uh, this, like a data URL might look like, and it's not only for text, it could be also used for images in this case, like in this case, but yeah, it requires a lot of uh, ASCII art, uh, ASCII science uh, to create this image probably. Like, again, we use it simply also to encode the content. And then there's uh, something else that we did. Uh, so to uh, it's possible also to share the educational content you have created uh, via the dark net, so via the Tor network, by using Onion Share, uh, probably. Why do we do this? Because in most of the parts, uh, presumably in most of the time in Afghanistan, if you look at the censorship, uh, probably China is excluded because they have really uh, dramatically a uh, censorship. You cannot. Uh, directly get access probably to educational material or free access to any kind of uh, free access to the web uh, additionally and this is a, just like an idea and opportunity so that you can share uh, via the darknet also educational content and this can be done entirely with a uh, from within the browser uh, not within the browser i'm sorry so this was the idea and i will skip this but it's basically there are two things involved uh, you have to download the tour browser of course and the other things you have to download onion share and onion share is like a dropbox uh, for the dark net and you can simply add your educational content in there and host it and it will generate not the data url it will generate a dot onion url and this is the url that you can share with your audience uh, that uh, they can actually access uh, anonymously this educational content probably just to get an idea and the other one, and this is what I really like much, there's this, it's called the interplanetary file system. Uh, it sounds great, but it's also great. It's an opportunity because this is like a, a gigantic uh, Dropbox, an open Dropbox uh, that works like a peer-to-peer -peer network. And in most cases, you will have to install and 
client for this that hosts so if you add and create a new uh, ipfs or if you want to share some educational content but there are some browsers that already implement this like the brave browser for example this protocol I already tried in this and there you have this uh, opportunity to ipfs to input here that i okay i will exclude this you can import data upload this to an ipfs network and it will download so i've already created this this will generate a new url which starts with ipfs a hashtag a, a large one so that you can find each other and where is it uh, here so i just started now and if you upload this it starts to see this uh, in an entire network so this content it makes it uh, available so i have this specific uh I, ipfs url this hash value is served by me it needs to be seared in this peer-to-peer -peer network and then this can be also shared or accessed directly from within uh, in this case the browser so the tour browser uh, the brave browser uh, allows this there's an uh, Aggregor browser which is quite good and there's also Oprah that allows you directly access this IPFS the other ones will add a proxy to it so in this case they can also access this content but in this case just like a peer-to-peer -peer. Uh, no login somewhere no account something the host you can host this directly from your laptop So IPFS, if you want to play around with it, it's free, it's open source, completely distributed, it's a great opportunity. And the other one is like WebTorrent. I don't know if every any one of you, so everything is within the materials in this repository. So the entire course in this documentation also if it has done some kind of file sharing with a uh, BitTorrent torrent network. And WebTorrent is something similar, but only for the uh, browser, additionally. So there's, you can try this out, probably just like on Instant.io. There's also some other services like Wormhole, and what we can do now, I could simply... Wait a second. Playground, where is this? We learning Kigali. So there are some couple of hidden folders in there, but what I can do, I just select this once, probably. I just uh, let's use the Web3 tutorial. So also with Web. The thing uh, for this one, you have to, it will uh, use only one markdown file. So if there are multiple, this will be hard to uh, add. So, can, so all this stuff will be added, will be seeded, and you will get, either you can directly share this link with your, with a colleague or something like this. So it's basically also a great opportunity to share a large file. If you have a couple of gigabytes, they will uh, create a, directly browser to browser connection if you send this link and the other one can access this then your browser will directly connect the data to the other ones so if it's sharing but what you can also do you get this magnet uri or magnet uri uh, and if i open this for example on my go to the layer script website i enter this url looks totally different so it's actually a bit longer than a, a normal one so but this one starts with magnet uh one double points so if you want to load this course might take some time because even if they're as far away but it's just like i've no created or seeded this yeah received this content via peer-to-peer -peer network 
So, and I'm also now seeding this. So uh, whenever I open this course, for example, and another one, so if I close this uh, instant, uh, this, this, this website where at first hosted this, and I send this link to another, my browser is online, they also will access the same educational content. Uh, so they also will access, I become also now a, a seeder in this P2P network. So this is just like one of multiple opportunities that modern browsers actually offer, which we can use for instant sharing probably of uh, content. So so the other one, of course, you've seen this in the classroom. So connecting users and the base technology that is used there so that you just get an idea. It's actually called WebRTC and it allows your browser to connect to another and share probably a, 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 to tra tra transfer a video stream or something else, any kind of data. So pretty easy. But actually it's in the background. For you, it should be easy as a user. So we implement it in the height implementation, but it's difficult at the background. So there are more steps involved that are actually hidden. So if this one wants to create a classroom or share some data with another one, there needs to be a signaling server, like in the global chat room. They, they have to have a point where they actually meet so for free. So And then they like send an offer. Bob receives this offer. And he sends, these are back, these are my capabilities, actually. I can, uh, I can trans, I have this video codec, for example, I have this audio codec, I transfer in this one, and you receive me, can access me, either if we are in the, uh, in the local, uh, in the same uh, local network, so we directly exchange IPs, other ones we have to negotiate these uh, public IPs, if it's done and this is exchanged, the direct communication happens. Otherwise, we need to have a fallback. And this is an expensive part, actually. This is a turn server. So if the communication fails, there needs to be a server that actually only uh, relays uh, the information. It's, it's, it's totally safe. It's encrypted. It's just only so the, encrypt, uh, the communication between all members is encrypted entirely and that turn server is just relaying this to the uh, different parties and there's this nice feature from this is a, I think he's a main Google Chrome developer and they have a series on how to just where they discuss things about uh, the internet and the browser and to him to him from another Google developer was this web RTC described And if it works now, okay, this takes a while. It takes a while, but you can look it up uh, afterwards by yourself because he's now complaining that other complicated things look now that previously he thought were complicated in the browser now were totally fine after he got the, the implementation of this stuff. And the other thing is that we need in these P2P networks that you probably need to be aware of is we have no central uh, governance. So there are um, different parties might send different values and we need to sync them somehow that all parties, all members uh, resolve afterwards in the same uh, state, actually. And this is difficult. In this centralized server, the server takes care. So this message um, I received at first. Uh, so the new state of the document is this. If you're using Google Docs and the, the state is transmitted to all the others. The distributed uh, network is quite complicated. We have to use, but this is quite new technology, CRDTs, which are conflict-free replicated data types. The implementation might vary. So probably I'll skip this, but they are like mathematically proven methodologies, uh, depending on uh, what you want to achieve, where you can even in a separate and distributed uh, in a peer-to-peer -peer system where messages get lost, where you receive messages twice and something, you end up in the same state. But this can be, for a simple counter, this can be quite simple. In this case, if you extend it, it's But if you have a collaborative editor, for example, this is quite much difficult. So therefore, we use, uh, like YJS, there are uh, different... Uh, technologies or libraries they can be used to. And now actually one of, what I wanted to present you is this 
classroom feature I have shown at the beginning. So whenever you add or create some kind of new classroom, have you been aware? Uh, you can create this classroom actually, try out different uh, backend solutions like GunDB, for example. Yeah. Uh, connect this, and I'll just uh, demo this to you. Uh, you have now this chat. So the other ones receive this as well. And in this chat, you also have the opportunity to have like, do like quizzes. So, what is two plus two? So of course, it's four. So this would be the quiz for a text input uh, field. And the other ones could, so this would be also like something like common state. If I add this, like, uh, let's check three. Now it's the correct one, uh, it's four. This is the correct answer. So I'm now the only one in this room. And so my state is like 100% got it on the second trial. But in the other uh, ones, it's like, uh, there are probably five got it on the first trial. Uh, the other ones resolve this. And you can have those quizzes, service, a similar syntax. And, but also do like coding, like JavaScript. I add this, this chat room. And I have to add, oh. I think probably just uh, as an example, but this could be any code piece that you have seen so far. If you translate, transmit this and you're in a classroom, so you can run either run this code or you can share or get into this collaborative project. Try this on Firefox. To collaborate in mode, so. So this one received now the same message. So I don't see the result because I did not participate with my data. So it's obviously it's four. And you see, I did it on the first trial and the other ones, so 50% of us did it on the second one. And if we are coding, we can answer this uh, cooperative coding space, like in this case. And I can do now some changes like what's here in the results. And if you see, this one is still in this local coding versioning stuff uh, space available. But if we switch this, it will be also in this uh, uh, global code editor. This is quite an easy way for students to show their solutions. Uh, it's more complex probably directly within the lecture hall uh, without explaining it. So, so you can also run this probably. See the result I guess is correct. So this has been changed and I get the same result. So this is just like the classroom feature in short, uh, which is based on peer-to-peer -peer technologies only within the browser. Uh, that should be allow anyone to create something like a shared classroom, share educational content, even without a, yeah, the server in the background. So, and if you don't want to host it on GitHub, there are plenty of other opportunities uh, uh, that you can use, actually. So there's the part for Lear script. So thank you very much. one of this also and there will be tomorrow we will have a demonstration in this couple yeah uh, tomorrow we have a demonstration of an idea that appears from the script at the moment we talk about content of a learning material but we want to combine this idea with real hardware for instance microcontrollers or your experimental setup for chemistry physics and so on and the idea is to have open educational resources addressing real physical hardware in your laboratories and make them available via your web system. And this again mixes up all the steps Andrew explained. The idea of communication, of reusable material, explaining the laboratory setup, as well as the interfaces for microcontrollers on all the other things. Yeah, you are heavily invited to take a view.
to this demonstration, and then we will explain how um, the extended setup can be um, implemented in your post. Just I'll show you. Sorry? Huh? Is it right here? Uh, not here. There will be some tables, I guess, some outside. So, so I'll just uh, to 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 pitch uh, also the idea. So the same way, like we have uh, like these open source projects on GitHub for their script and educational content, we have now provide you can have a, like a repository on Open Labs in this case. And the one is just like where can you combine simulations problem with real hardware. Uh, for ease, there's this uh, address lab with an ABR simulator, as you've seen this now. And the idea is uh, all the configuration is stored with a single text file, but this time it's not, uh, it's Markdown, it's a YAML or JSON file, it's a, it's a, it's a, it requires a configuration somehow. It's a bit more complex in this case. And so the tutorial, this lab is described here in more detail, and you can use it, you can try it out. It's up, you can use it fork it probably uh, change adapt it and there is this what we have done now so this this uh, yeah deploy button so it makes the same like a Leah script if I click onto this what does load there's a the address lab website uh, deploy and to this is access the raw URL so this is the configuration of my entire lab please load it so okay done loading and user has already created like three rooms uh, where you can have like invite members this is the configuration so we have a markdown component where you add educational code we describe uh, what the tasks are might be you have a module from code editor a simulator and then your students the only thing that you have to do is to share this url and it's like done previously in the classroom so we uh, come and connect via PTP network, via WebRTC. And so that your students can probably also like uh, read some context, add some code in here. So, well, not the right one. Run code. So this is just like running the simulation now. So it needs to be compiled. It's the same setup as before. As you can see, there can be more stuff to this, more complex rooms. But you can also, and this is the uh, great thing about, so the browser also offers now, for mostly Chrome, uh, access to uh, uh, those uh, Arduinos, to serial communication, uh, to USB devices and stuff like this. But I can also host locally a server, so I can open something like a station. And when I show it to you, demo it tomorrow. And then if you open the browser in station mode, so it has access to some kind of a laboratory, some experiment, stuff like this. And this is then also shared within uh, this general classroom. So that the only thing a teacher has to do is to, just to do some basic configuration based on the uh, uh, modules that are available. Uh, so demo this also to, uh, tomorrow. You can explore different modules, add them to this list, reconfigure them, and uh, create a classroom and attach hardware to it and other ones so this is now disseminated by the peer-to-peer -peer network so this is one if you want to have a couple of them or change them you can also create a local fork and just I uh, want to rename it stuff like this for beginners uh, save the title has changed so I have new tell two classrooms where I can share all this stuff so the, the, the ideas are the same as uh, for the educational content, but now the idea is just to share hardware more, more interactively. So in this case, but you can discover this in discovery demos tomorrow um, at uh, noon. There we are present in AD12. It's one of the larger lecture or the larger conference rooms here in the background. So you are heavily invited and. We hope that um, this tutorial gives you many inputs for your D12. <laughs> D12. A, 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 A D12. Yes, thank you. Well, for noon, noon to uh, 1 p.m. for one hour. So we have enough time to. A D12. Maybe if you are earlier, but I can see that your platform also has a lot of infographics. 
If there's a servo system, then you can use burp. Yeah, you can you say something about the user community? Um, the meeting, regular meetings, and exchanging the code? Last uh, winter, we had a first Aliascript uh, user community meeting. It was impressive to see. I, I'm currently thinking about who was attending from Africa, but I try to remember that uh, we had persons from all continents. Um, and it was very impressive to see some solutions, especially a hospital from Philadelphia provided all their statistics courses based on the script and sometimes I take a view to their material to get a new idea how to present, uh, how to prepare the content. We have colleagues from South um, America, they made excellent courses on computer science. <laughs> um, with a huge amount of animations and very helpful for our scenarios too. Um, um, a colleague from Australia sent many uh, posts about the opportunity to generate the script content by ChatGTP, as we mentioned in the beginning of this session. Um, there are some, it is a small community of some hundred uh, persons but um, we hope to motivate additional lecturers or um, organizers from uh, government um, to pay attention to this uh, network and to support it. So it means at the moment we are running small, relatively small, but it's growing uh, continuously. It's interesting, we made some investigations about the GitHub repository containing LeoScript course materials and in order to understand which of the plugins Andrew mentioned are really used or which kind of um, material is generated, what are the interfaces um, other lecturers use. Um, it was interesting analysis probably can talk about. If you need some badges to record this slide, so it's in interesting. I think we made some tests with Andrew about yeah, the badges, so and I guess it would be helpful to have some explicit um, knowledge about yeah. the complexity I can of do like the training. We will cover infrastructure. Yeah, sounds great. Yes. Tomorrow. I'm sorry, sorry. For tomorrow, does it require no. extra no, no, no. It's completely free, oh. and, and everyone is invited to take a view to this setup. Very nice. Thank you. Okay, let's finish the formal part. If you have any questions, and we should take a view to some specific uh, topics. Feel free to ask us. Many thanks for this interesting dialogue. It was a great chance to present our activities here. And I'm looking forward to meet you in the evening or tomorrow uh, okay. during the next phase. Would it thank possible if we take a thank you uh, to take a picture of all of us? Yeah. So, yeah. I want to stand by this. To <laughs> 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 he has already <laughs> So which tones are still Shall we get closer together? Oh, yeah, this, this, this is a circle. So are you okay? It's advantage. No, I'm still ahead. Still ahead. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. You just <laughs> Are you 
getting all of us. Please say Jesus. I'm to the wall. <laughs> Cheese. Cheese. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank